Sambad welcomes you all in today's uh, discussion with Sri Raji Malotraji, uh, the author of the book Snakes in the Ganga. Uh, this discussion is being conducted in association with the Infinity Foundation. Uh, so, Infinity Foundation is a non profit organization based in Princeton, USA, uh, focused on research and education. It specializes in the field of civilizational studies, applying the Dharma lens to examine a broad range of topics. It disseminates its uh, unique research findings through books, videos, and public events. And UI, uh, the Sambad, is a student group of uh, IIT Kharagpur uh, that organizes lectures, talks, and discussions on topics relevant to the current generation and the current scenario and the phenomenons uh, over, uh, around worldwide with an aim to promote a nationalistic school of thought as well as to cultivate lo love and devotion towards our civilization amongst the student community. So we intend that today's discussion will provide the students at our institute a new perspective in understanding current development in social science, technology, and their cultural impact. It will educate them in overcoming the challenges that they may face in corporate and academic workspace globally, as well as it will motivate and ignite civilizational devotion in them. So today's discussion will be primarily or majorly focusing on the topic attacking meritocracy at IIT from the chapter four of the book Snacks in the Ganga. We will try to understand in its broader context uh, including critical race theory, cultural capital, and the attack on the meritocratic system as a whole, and why should or why it should be a great concern for us, and also uh, why it should be defended or needs to be defended at its root. So, without uh, uh, and uh, also for this discussion, we have three panelists. Uh, the uh, uh, we have uh, Dipesh Binod Katria sir, uh, Professor Dipesh Binod Katria. He is the assistant professor in the Department of Center of Excellence. Uh, uh, I, I guess, or the Indian Indian knowledge systems at IIT Kharagpur. And second, uh, we have with us Commander Jetli V K Jetli, who is an alumnus of IIT Kharagpur and the founder board member of Pan IIT India. Uh, he was also the president of IIT Kharagpur Alumni Foundation and also the board member of IIT Bhubaneswar and advisory to the technology students Jim Khanna uh, at IIT Kharagpur. And also, he is the advisory board member of Partho Ghosh Academy Leadership. Uh, and Partha Ghosh, uh, Sir Partha Ghosh is also with us today uh, to make his comments and discuss uh, discuss his topics. So, Dr. Partha Ghosh is a, a policy advisor and a strategist for corporates and governments. He is known worldwide as an innovator of business and economic models. He is currently enjoying uh, advisory relationships with multiple organizations in more than half a dozen nations. And he did his undergraduate work at IIT, and he's uh, one of the a founder, uh, one of the founding member of the Partha Ghosh Academy of Leadership at IIT Kharagpur, and also on the advisory board of its uh, board of eight since its, its inception. And he has uh, two advanced engineering and management degrees from MIT also. So, so uh, without any further delay, we should start now. I think so. I uh, I would like to request uh, Professor Dipesh Binod Katriya sir, uh, the assistant professor, so uh, to introduce our esteemed guest today and to and then make your comments and discuss uh, carry on the discussions. Sir, Deepesh, Deepesh, sir, over yeah. to you. Thank you, Krishna. Pranams to uh, Shri Rajiv Malhotra ji, uh, Jetli sir, Pathagos sir, and everybody who have uh, gathered here today. To introduce uh, Shri Rajiv Malhotra ji, he is a researcher and public intellectual on civilizational studies, world religions, and cross-cultural encounters. He was trained initially as a physicist and then as a computer scientist specializing in artificial intelligence in 1970s. After successful corporate career in the USA, he became an entrepreneur and founded and ran several IT companies across several countries. And since 1990s, he, he, he is working as a founder of Indi Infinity Foundation, mm -hmm. uh, which is based in Princeton, USA. He has been uh, researching civilizations from historical, social sciences, and mind science perspectives. He has authored several best selling books uh, Breaking India, Being Different, Indra's Net, Defending Hinduism's Full uh, Philosophical Unity, uh, Battle for Sanskrit, Dead or Alive, Oppressive or Liberating, Political or uh, Sacred, uh, Sanskrit Non Translatables. Snakes in Ganga, and now uh, Battle for IITs. Uh, so, sir has been very instrumental in not only, uh, I mean, his books are very uh, seminal, and he has been able to give a very different new viewpoint to view, look at various aspects which are related to India. 
So uh, without any delay, I would now request sir to present a small summary about uh, uh, this uh, book, Battle for IITs, and which also becomes the fourth chapter of uh, the book, Snakes in the Gangas. Rajiv Malhotra ji, sir, please. Yeah, namaste everyone, and uh, thank you for this organizing this. Uh, so this is a book I, 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 we are talking about. Uh, this is a very thin book. It's uh, one of the thinnest books I've ever written. It's 140 pages. Uh, there's no reason an IIT shouldn't read it. It's uh, affordable, very inexpensive. And free copies, complimentary copies we have. We have hundreds of them, thousands of them. So anybody who wants a copy of this, uh, we can get you one. So you should talk to the one of these organizers. You can make a list uh, of people. We can ship you from Delhi. We have a whole lot of stock. Uh, that's one thing uh, I would like to do because it's more fun to discuss a book with people who've read it or at least gone through it. Uh, so uh, rather than me, you know, uh, giving an overview, which I'm going to do anyway, uh, but I think it would be nice if it's a lot of hard work has gone into it. Uh, so IITians should be more uh, alert about the discussions concerning their institution, uh, but they haven't been. Uh, the IIT as an institution and merit as a concept is under attack uh, from Harvard. Uh, major Harvard professors have attacked and used IIT as a case study to sh make the claim that merit in India is actually casteist. That is their point. That uh, what, what is called merit is a sham. It's just a cover up. It's just a camouflage for transmitting caste privilege from one generation to the next. And so these privileged people Instead of going in, in the old days, they would say, what is your caste and give a preference. But now they're asking, what is your IIT score or what, you know, what, merit and all that. But that ag merit actually is caste biased. This is the general thesis. And she gives a lot of examples of data. She gone to one, uh, she went to IIT Madras and talked to people. And then she gave example from here, an example from there. Just random anecdotes here and there. Somebody complained who was low caste, complained. And... She draws her own inferences and a lot of extrapolation with very few data points, a huge amount of extrapolation and a lot of projection from her side on her, her own ideological projection. So this ideological projection uh, is called critical race theory in the US, uh, where basically it says that race uh, has defined all the power structures, including meritocracy including ideas of family are race based uh, because certain privileged race came up with these rules of family and all that, including the laws, including every aspect of society, all the institutions have been developed by privileged people over hundreds of years. And this critical race theory started as an offshoot of Marxism and basically saying that the whites are the privileged oppressors and the blacks are the oppressed. And, and therefore, these structures have to be dismantled. All the structures are uh, available for dismantling, even the concept of gender. Even there is no such thing as a female. There is no such thing as a male. Even that is a structure that the dominant people created. The, it is social construction. It is not biological. Being a woman is not biological. It is a, it is a social construction under which, uh, under social pressure, people make this choice. So this kind of gone into bizarre extremes, this whole critical race theory. And uh, then, then Indians were brought into Harvard to create an Indian version. And the Indianization of this critical race theory is called critical caste theory. And critical caste theory basically says that the uh, in the case of India, it's not blacks and whites. It is upper caste versus Dalits. And, and then they added Muslims and said Muslims are also minority. They're also oppressed. So what you have are uh, Khalistanis, Muslims, Dalits, everybody who has a grievance against uh, uh, the country, united uh, in fighting the establishment because this establishment, any institution, is a product of uh, abuse over hundreds of years. And therefore, there is injustice. And this is the latest social justice theory being taught to everybody. Uh, Indian IIS people are going, sent by the government to Harvard for training, and they're taught this. Uh, Kennedy School teaches uh, government leaders all over the U.S. and they're taught this. Uh, the Newman Center for Media teaches this to journalists and media, not only from India, but U.K., Europe, Wall Street Journal, BBC, Washington Post, all of these guys. And they're taught this. Indian billionaires are funding this. 
Mahindra has got Mahindra Humanity Center. Lakshmi Mittal is funding the South Asia Study Center at Harvard. And they are, this is a basic backbone of their ideology. So this is a very serious matter. And the target of the, the, the only uh, Indian institution which got a full book, a 400 page book uh, on this by Harvard is IIT. Uh, Ajanta Subramanian, professor, wrote a book on uh, IIT. That IIT is a living case study of this whole abuse. So that is how big this issue is. I mean, it's not a matter of me introducing it in five, ten minutes. I mean, I've written eight hundred page book. This snakes in the Ganga. It talks about these people in Harvard, funded by Indians, who are doing this kind of mischief. Okay, and uh, 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 then one chapter of it is dedicated to what's going on with IITs. And I took out that chapter and adapted it and expanded a little bit and made a whole book out of it. So because if people are saying I can't read 800 pages, okay, that's an excuse. But there's no excuse for an IIT and not to be not to be able to read this. So that that is my contribution. Uh, I have I'm 73 now. I spent 50% uh, of my life, 100% uh, dedicated to a cause. Not part time job, not weekend, not going around here and there getting the accolades, but quitting. Quitting my business, quitting my for-profit activities, quitting my job, no income, basically living off of the money I had made previously uh, as, as a retiree and investing all my tan man dhan towards this cause. And I am disappointed that uh, IITians and others are kind of laid back and their attitude is maybe he'll do all the work or maybe we'll just sit and clap and we'll become very emotional for a few minutes. But no, but I don't see them taking ownership of this problem and and uh, it, so it is all jugad it is all opportunism how do i get ahead how do i make a little more how do i get into this or that you know scheme but i do not see the iitians and this has really disappointed me if i had known that the iitians would be so useless as a group of people that you could mobilize frankly i would not have bothered to defend them let them go whatever is happening to let them worry about it if their own leaders are not interested in defending themselves. Why should I bother? You see, so this is this is where the this is my my involvement in this whole matter. Thank you. So thank you, Rajiv, for your uh, excellent synopsis. So I may request Deepesh sir to uh, give his comments and carry on the discussion with Rajiv ji. Thank you, Rajiv ji. Uh, thank you for taking the stand on the world stage and uh, uh, being concerned about IITs. These are the premier institutes of our country and uh, they need to be defended. You understood this cause and you defended them. And uh, we can understand your frustration also. Uh, uh, it is not wrong. Uh, as a team, the Samwad, the students who were contacting us, we could actually see that kind of, uh, uh, that kind of uh, disinterest in the uh, entire matter amongst us. So... Uh, I feel uh, understanding our own problems, understanding our own, own shortfalls is a very important starting point to uh, being able to defend our position. Uh, so, uh, so this book is out. We know about that because of you, the cast of merit by Ajanta Subramanian and the defense that you have uh, offered in your book. Uh, as far as this cast is concerned, actually, I was going through a book and I realized the way you have uh, discussed about this LGBTQ matter and how you say, and it is very true also, I personally also believe that what you have said is very true, that these are not uh, very serious issues, these are not uh, problems of our Indian society, and that is why uh, there, were, there were no specific rules or specific uh, uh, discussions or policies on it. Uh, which which still is the case, but slowly and gradually this caste thing is being highlighted. And these are all uh, kinds of new attacks on, uh, this, these are all breaking India forces as you have rightly pointed out in your book. So uh, if we if we see the outlook uh, about caste in our uh, scriptures, so there is this uh, verse in the Bhagavad Gita chapter 413, which says, Chatur Varanyam Maya Srushtam Guna Karma Vibhagashaha. So here it becomes very clear that this idea of Varana is based on Guna and Karma. So the kind of intentions, inclinations that the person is having and the kind of actions many times to 
the the tendencies and the kind of uh, professions that uh, different uh, people have chosen for themselves so that is the basic idea i think i'm reiterating but then i still believe that uh, this needs to be clarified and but the mahabharata itself is a case where uh, uh, since this uh, uh, this profession of karna was uh, seen so rigidly and that is why uh, the, that was one of the very uh, foundational cause of the entire war at the same time we have to also see that all these people who fought in the mahabharata war were also the sons of satyavati and parasha uh, satyavati uh, and uh, shantanu and the author of this book was also uh, the son of satyavati uh, whom rishi parasara parashara has himself chosen so those are the things to be uh, uh, thought about and that is why this problem uh, has been in a very subtle way addressed since then in even the 18th chapter of the bhagavad gita uh, there are around four verses which uh, discuss this and uh, they are very clear so they are saying that shamo damas tapas shaucham shanti rajav mevacha uh, so these are the kind of qualities that a brahma is supposed to have and then uh, shauryam tejo dhrutir daksham that is that, that are the qualities of the kshatriya and then uh, further he says krushi gauraksha vanijyam uh, vaishya vaishya karma swabhavajam and followed by paricharyatmakam karma so the entire service industry from that point of view is a part of uh, uh, this caste so this is the this is the overview of the caste system and this problem is not so very existent and uh, iitians there is there is this kind of a fear among the faculties of iit that uh, we will get into controversies and all those things but about this also our scriptures are very clear so this kind of an attack is an attack on the iits and that is why if we defend this attack there is nothing like there is there is nothing like a controversy or there is nothing to be worried about if there is there is no path so there is this term atatai which is there in the uh, in our uh, scriptures and uh, this is an attack of an atatai so if an atatai is even a guru or is even a brahman or even a very knowledgeable person so gurum va bala vruddha va brahmanam va bahushrutam atatainam ayantam hanya deva avicharayan so this is very important for us to immediately defend this so uh, we understand your cause sir and uh, uh, we we i mean as an iit faculty i wholeheartedly support what uh, has been spoken and uh, and from my experiences in the campus i can very confidently say that this is not a ground reality what has been projected i disagree with your approach in in the following sense when you when a problem is raised uh, you address whether theoretically that problem existed thousands of years ago in the vedic era in the gita era uh, and and you have shown that maybe it, it, at that time the belief was that uh, it is all merit based and there was fairness and justice towards all the varnas that answer does not address whether in 2023 the problem exists in a uh, in iit the fact that it did not exist in the kurukshetra Uh, in thousands of years ago, does not tell me whether the problem exists or doesn't exist today. So you've only defended the lack of uh, abuse in the uh, in the Mahabharat, and we can of course discuss that. But that defense of uh, defense of something that uh, happened thousands of years ago in a certain location does not give you automatically a defense of whether IIT Kharagpur uh, today in 2023 is having caste abuse. So you haven't even touched on that. Now the so the first methodology. should have been uh, from your side empirical methodology you guys are engineering people so the first methodology should be what is the empirical empirical evidence today of uh, people coming from different jatis and different communities and uh, different castes whether there is prejudice against them whether there is not prejudice against them that should be the first issue the first response which i didn't get and then if there is to to some extent if whatever to whatever extent there is problem and we can't deny the problem if there is a problem Uh, we can we have to uh, uh, we cannot be escapist we cannot say there is no problem if there is a problem if there are documented examples we have to deal with them as an engineer you cannot just take the data that works for you and discard the data that did not fit your curve and say okay this data doesn't exist you have to present all the scientific data so so if there are instances of caste abuse you have to say okay they are there and we will do something to solve them now then the question is whether the interpretation of this caste abuse 
but to whatever extent it is, whether it is 2%, 20%, 80%, I don't know. But to whatever extent there may be caste abuse examples, then you have to question the question. Real question is whether this is to be interpreted as a continuation of Mahabharata and Vedas and so on, which we don't agree is the case, or whether this is the result of some other thing that happened in history. So the the book, the book is not, this is not denying that the problem, that there are problems today. This book is not denying that we need to solve those problems. This book is merely saying that the history of Varna Jati from the past cannot be used to extrapolate that that is the reason for the caste problem today. There are many things that happened. There was a Muslim invasion that disrupted society and a lot of people, a lot of people lost their land, became landless laborers. Okay. There is the, there is the casta, uh, casta idea from Europe, from Portugal and Spain that they brought to India. And they had a racist idea of hierarchy and they started interpreting the, the Indian jatis and into as castes and put them in a hierarchy. Then there is the era of the British who turned it into a rigid caste uh, system. Uh, and Lord Risley was a race guy. He was a race science guy. And so then they turned it into this, uh, resisted by the Indian jatis. So the, the original work in this is to disconnect the Indian tradition and the current problem. It is not to deny the current problem, but we are saying that the wrong theory is being applied to interpret this current problem. And the correct theory requires understanding the complex history that India has gone through. Many, many things happened. Many, many people, including a lot of foreign influences, played a role in creating this. And also, to some extent, the Indian politics of democracy have turned caste vote banks into a kind of a political fight with each other. And, and certain minority groups are not in, not uh, sending their kids to science, technology, education. They're sending them to madrasas and places like that. And therefore, they're unfit. So I think when you, for it, I would not do what you are doing. I would not deny that there's a problem. I would interpret the problem differently than the blame being going to, you know, Vedas and Hindus and all that. Uh, so it's, it's a different interpretation of a problem. But the problem exists, whether it is a little bit or a lot is a different matter. So I have a different approach uh, than you do. And this is why I'm saying it. Uh, if I if if what if what you said is the whole story, uh, you know, then I wasted my years and years writing, doing all this research and coming up with original perspectives because there's nothing to nothing new. You already know it. It's in the Gita. It's already know it. You just quote the Gita and the job is done. But the job is not done. You have to find out why is it today the in uh, in uh, uh, IIT Kharagpur the, the reason I'm discussing with you is so that you can take a stand on whether or not these issues exist in IIT Kharagpur today. Whether Gita or not, I don't know how many people have read the Gita and how many people are following it. But are the students and faculty guilty of this today? And to whatever extent they might be, what is the cause and what is the remedy? Is it Vedic or is it something else that caused it? And what is the remedy? Is the remedy that we have to dismantle all the Vedic structures or not? So that is where the conversation must go. And that is what I spent years doing. And I think you missed the point. Sorry about this blunt, but I think this has to be said. So, sir, my idea was that uh, these are the these are the thoughts that are flowing among the generations. So, uh, so if uh, nowadays, if uh, these kind of feelings are being instigated, they are not uh, the original feelings of the Indians. That is the point that I was trying to make. So these these castes cannot be put into the binary of black and white, as you have explained in a book. That was what I wanted to convey. So, sir, the uh, the, the kind of question that I was uh, I was uh, thinking of raising is uh, you have been uh, talking about different kinds of attacks. Even this uh, book uh, talks about yeah this one uh, issue is there, but many other issues have been discussed in the 22 chapters of your book. So uh, one thing is, of course, unless we understand the problem, we cannot tackle it. So having a deeper knowledge, deeper understanding of a problem is very important. So that that is true. But at the same time, uh, one approach can be how we can uh, uh, strengthen the resistance because the attacks are always going to be of different kinds. So what what uh, what you mentioned in your first breaking India, you yourself say that the way now it now the things are being taken up and the attacks are being posed are very different. So uh, can there be some kind of a solution uh, wherein we can? We can focus on increasing the resistance of our country to these kind of an attack, these kind of attacks. So they, can there be such foundational uh, or very uh, basic uh, corrections or changes that we have to think 
of bringing in the mindset of the indian society so the mindset of the indian society has to do with uh, problems at the individual level uh, we cannot we there are problems at the institutional level why are the billionaires funding they should be stop why aren't the gurus doing anything why are they going around pretending there's no problem and just quoting from shloka from geeta and saying okay there's no problem my job is done i've quoted the geeta no no problem but the problem is a ground reality i mean they're not willing to face like i have to face and take all the heat take all the firing coming back at me because i'm willing to stand up and say all these things and our gurus are not willing to say because they want some award they want some accolades politicians are very uh, kg the indian government the the consul general the embassies the cultural ministry they all very politically crack all this goody goody they are not doing their job none of them is doing their job okay so a few radical rabid talk guys running around you know influencers on youtube and all they are doing this but they are not responsible people necessarily many of them and so they are doing a job which is counterproductive so this is the state of current leadership but the uh, another problem a deeper problem bigger problem more complicated to solve is that the masses the masses are emotional rather than intellectual they are they are easily wooed by emotional arguments psychological manipulation give them some feeling feel good and they'll go for it whether it is cricket or music or dance or some sensation or some big controversy they have to go fight this or that they are basically emotional people indians are not the average indian is not thinking very intellectual a low iq but a lot of emotions and so such people how do you how do you get anything serious out of them such people will tend to protect my interest my interest is not to do this to stay away from this controversy i will look after my job my career my family uh, so this may be okay for a student who has to make a career but how do you justify this kind of behavior by billionaires who are who, who made more than they need and why aren't they able to stick their neck out and do something for a bigger cause you find that they are not willing to take a controversial stand because they are very selfish so the how do you change the character of people you can't make you you use the word resilience but resilience is at the personal level it starts with one individual at a time if i am basically a jugadu i'm just trying to improvise short term quick solution to uh, selfishly to optimize my own person uh, my own family my own whatever is in it for me and i couldn't care a damn about whatever else happens then you know then how do you how do i i'm not resilient i'm just a very selfish guy and i protect myself with layers and layers of fences around me i deny the problem i don't want to get involved i look at the attitude of iitians towards my book that's the apathy disinterestedness lack of uh, courage lack of sense of responsibility and sense of ownership so if i iit is a microcosm this book has been out for more than a year and i've sent copies everywhere in the world i don't know what else i could do to uh, to, to tell the iitians that this is out there i've addressed many pan iitian meetings many zoom meetings physical meetings in washington in california in uh, uh, some of the iits don't even want to talk about it because it will put a bad thing on them some many of them have said that uh, we just want to pass exam go get a job and we are okay so as long as that is the attitude what are you talking about resilience it is there is no resilience that is possible from such a selfish a short by short sighted uh, over emotionalized population and such a population is doomed such a population is doomed in today's world so i don't hold a whole lot of hope that uh, as a collective entity our vedic civilization can survive you know because unless there are individuals who wake up and i don't see evidence of that thanks to rajiv malhotra ji that he is a real fighter i will use the word for him a real fighter he is like a role model for not only the iitians but a lot of indians a lot of hindus who respect this ratan dharma and the way he is trying to create awareness sir aapko main shat shat naman karta hu pehle to it's really great and i salute being a naval commander sir it's really great sir to be sitting in front of you today and discussing this topic sir i have been listening your videos quite a good number of them and today i feel happy that i am sitting in front of you this particular book sir uh by ajanta subramanyam i feel you know after reading whatever has been written there are some people in this world who talk about the differences all the time differences they do not talk about the commonalities which we have they want to create fissures in the society wherever they can they want to create disturbance wherever they can 
they forget there are so many things common in amongst us and i feel you know probably ajanta is a pawn in the hands of some anti india forces to be precise she's a pawn and many times i feel you know today when india is doing so well all over the world so there are some people who are bent upon destroying that brand india image and iit brand despite your the very strong words against the iitians which i do agree you use the word iitians are useless they are short sighted they are not reacting they are selfish let me tell you i accept all these adjectives with total humbleness whatever you said but despite that the fact is iit has become the biggest brand in the world from india today there is no other brand from india which stands out anywhere in the world but iit brand has has been recognized you can say and there are forces which are very shaky that our iitians are doing much better in silicon valley and many other places compared to the even the harvard graduates and many other colleges of the us so they are getting shaky that these iits are producing products which are shaking the foundations of the so called us elites coming from their own colleges they are calling that elites and all those type of thing you know trying to uh, that's a, like a caste you know upper caste lower caste meritocracy and all those type of words which uh, have been used in the book through critical race theory etc now it's all you know according to me it's all nonsense if you ask me and now my batch i am sir 79 batch from iit khadakpur sir we are celebrating our 50th year of togetherness from iit we joined iit exact 50 years back in 1974 our batch mates all over the world they are coming back we never asked even till today we don't know who is a brahman who is a kshatriya who is what and blah 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 by names we do know about a christian about a muslim but otherwise we don't know about the caste of the others let me tell you and in the colleges also when we are studying no professor nobody is bothered whether a particular student belongs to any particular caste or not no way in the hostel also and sir for your information and for those who are youngsters iit system was the first system in india where there were no separate messes for different categories of people for south indians for north indians for brahmins for uh, kshatriyas or for the jainis or the other people only single mess where everybody will eat together yes only one vegetarian room and non vegetarian could be there but that also people didn't bother they picked up their plate from the vegetarian counter and sat next to the chap who was eating non vegetarian so iits have started a system long time back in 1951 when iit khadakpur started single mess for everybody there were people who said probably that time hey why can't we have separate messes they are nothing doing so those people who founded it that time they were visionaries they said all are equal here and i think when we landed here in 1974 nobody bothered we were ragged equally along with a chap irrespective of his caste creed or religion by another chap we didn't know what was his caste creed religion so i just don't see it's totally i said nonsense whatever has been written in the book it doesn't exist at all i 100% deny those allegations which have been put in this book we are a one composite unit iitians yes we are good we demonstrate our capability wherever we go whether we set up industry or we go into a government job as ias officer or ips officer i myself joined indian navy and did quite well so iitians they produce themselves they are polished very nicely in the iits and when i say all these things maybe some exceptions can be there chota mota now those exceptions they cannot become the rule so based on those uh, exceptions somebody can't write a stupid book like this and keep accusing iits iits are a role model for all the other engineering colleges in india and not only in india in the other world, countries also today iits are setting up their uh, iits in the other countries zimbabwe in dubai or abu dhabi probably and malaysia so many other countries are coming to us to set up iits so that's what i said iit is a brand globally which anti india forces they want to destroy that sir that is why such books are being written by anti india forces to bring a bad name to iit according to me sir we should just not bothered you have taken the lead of demolishing in a beautiful way we are with you 
and yes we may not be that much vocal as you are but we stand by each and every statement which we have written in this chapter 4 of the book sir and i 100% deny wo jo hindi mein bolte hai na sir chalti gaadi ke piche hi kutte bhongte hain jo gaadi khadi rehti hai parking mein uske upar kutte nahi bhongte ye log bhongte rahe hain bhongne diye sir but yes you have done a great job at demolishing their each and every logic beautifully and we stand by that and uh, and just for information i am compiling one book sir about 100 great iitians dedicated to the service of nation those iitians who didn't go abroad and stayed back in india are contributed at least 70 to 80% of their professional life in india and they are the indian passport holders i am compiling their stories almost 90 stories are complete just 10 or more left within the next two or three months you will probably get a story uh, that book now i didn't bother to check what cost they belong to no way how they have performed that is the criteria and how they have served the nation and they are also let me tell you it's not only the industrialist a chap who has gone into the spiritual field his story is also there and there is a professor alok sagar from iit delhi who just left one day who was professor of raghuram rajan he just went to himachal pradesh and is spending his time with the tribal people his story is also there in the book so we have catered for all those people so i think this is all bum kam sir and uh, whatever is written is totally nonsense or i totally deny that such thing exist in the iits 50 saal se main sir iits ke sath connected hu nicely and i totally deny it so one thing i want you to know is that recently in the last month there was a very there was an article in the academic journal and i can get you the details academic journal in the in i think it comes out of britain uh, an academic journal attacking my book okay and and basically saying that this defense of iits is completely bunkum this rajiv malhotra is defending uh, iits and kind kind of uh, Uh, so this article this review of my book uh, a very negative harsh review of my book supporting the ajanta subramaniam point of view and this critical race theory point of view and all of that and down uh, denouncing my my book now i sent it to a few iit professors uh, and said do you want to write a review because the the subject matter i can't write a review because it's my book i can't it's a conflict of interest i can't review my own book but you are an yeah. iitian and, and the yeah. the subject is about you so they are now supporting the this debate has now gone into the academic journals could you could you write a review no answer no answer they are all interested ke bhi hamara ye yahan se grant mil jayega wahan par hamari foreign trip mil jayegi humko ye mil jayega no i now if you are able to get a good iit and iit professor faculty member i don't care whether he likes my work or not but he can be neutral and objective if you can get somebody to write a review also for this journal i can send you the link sure sir we'll do it sir and moreover further i would like to you know assert that we should start a campaign with all those industrialists from india who are funding harvard university and yes. we should try to boycott this university we yes. should boycott i think yes. that i'm yes. hearing good things from you so one thing i want from you is get some faculty person to write a rebuttal to that review and send it to that journal yes, because you know the author cannot go and defend himself but uh, another academician can go and do that second is Absolutely. you know we have given so much material on um, there is a whole chapter on mahindra humanity center at harvard there is a whole chapter on piramal center there is a whole chapter on uh, lakshmi mittal center then there is the tatas uh, have uh, funded a lot then there are bajaj then there are these a uh, lot of people they are funding uh, ashoka university which is a harvard kind of branch office in india and some of the mahindras and all these people they have actually given uh, a full floor of their headquarters in mumbai as a harvard office and they are collecting data they are doing big data gathering there into the villages and social media they are gathering data on social justice on on all kind of minority problems harvard is collecting and they are using this to train their algorithms i have pointed out all this and you know we need we need a response we need the indian people to respond to be concerned they need to go to the uh, industrialists who are funding all this and say why are you doing it maybe your kid will get into harvard maybe you'll get some business deals maybe you'll get a seat on their board of directors maybe it's very prestigious for you on a global stage 
maybe you'll get into you know some uh, world economic forum as a big lead, leading to, uh, speaker i mean is good for your ego maybe all that is true for you but that is selfish and you ought to give up yes, all sir. that and say hey listen I, my country comes first my culture comes first and i'm not going to go and betray i think that kind of uh, that kind of uh, kind of an andolan or some kind of a very intellectual peaceful but intellectual pushback needs to happen and i'm glad that you were you are planning on doing that sir we will do that sir let me tell you i also present an organization which is youth for nation where we we say rashtra sarvopari nation first so with that aim we go to the colleges and universities we will highlight uh, let me accept my ignorance little bit i didn't know too much about this topic that so much of heated debate was going on about this what harvard is been doing it but now i understand it so i will get into this fully sir and we will do and we will boycott harvard and tell these industries also put pressure on them that stop funding such anti indian organizations anywhere in the world very good and you know if uh, if now lakshmi mittal gave 50 million to harvard as to start the center and then many other industries giving more and more and uh, you know these other guys also gave lots of money for their centers apna naam aa gaya they put their name in harvard they feel very proud actually yes, that money spent in india could do a lot more good even even very if good, they sir. even for the cause that they want to have even that cause is better for funding responsible organizations in india rather than get funding foreigners to do danda on india now whatever the, giving good. foreigners the money and training these rabid uh, journalists and uh, all these people to do to fight against india and put sanctions on india and have hearings against india that is a wrong approach it does not help anybody in india it does not help dalits or muslims or christians or anybody uh, you know it uh, just create more fight and everybody loses and that is a divide and rule which the british did and that is a divide and rule harvard yes. is doing and our stupid our stupid uh, billionaires are like the zamindars some foolish rajas were also sold out to the british you know there were some indian rajas who were sold out to the british to bring them help 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 the get the british help to fight another raja one raja would be yes. funded uh, would be supported by the british to fight uh, his own uh, own neighbor and this divide yes. and rule is what destroyed all of india and it is happening again but uh, you know i'm writing very clearly i'm putting names evidence data so please read it thank you sir thank you we'll do it that sir we should move to our next uh, panelist sir patha s ghosh sir are you there dr patha s ghosh i'm very impressed uh, and touched by the emotions rajiv with your thoughts and i would however like to go a bit deeper into the subject from the point of view of the people of our country with the spirit of what tagore vivekananda perhaps presented on the global stage and see what does it really mean because i live in boston i will confess i interface with harvard mit and tufts i'm connected with three of these universities and what i notice in these universities what they call freedom of expression various people express their thoughts in different ways many negatives many positives and they go about doing things as you know what's going on in the united states between the republicans and the democrats and they all take positions so often i question myself that do we respond to many of the nonsenses let they come they come and go as long as we stay on the high level and take our country forward let everyone get enlightened with the performance of our country so that's point number one so i agree with your emotions but there are two ways to re respond one is to fight back on the other side raise ourselves to what we have to do the second point that you made and which commander touched on i think a very important point why do mittal starters bajaj are so eager to spend money in these great universities which are already endowed with billions of dollars when they could put the money for the people at the base of the pyramid who are starving 
India's GDP per capita, we all know, is only $2,000. United States is $60,000. The IITs are struggling to fund projects. Government has closed down. They need more funding. But these people spend. Why do they do that? That touches on something more, more fundamental. And that's why, Rajiv, I would like you to focus on. I would love to focus, uh, work with you. There is a thousand and two hundred years of insecurity that has built into the intelligentsia and the rich people of this country. That you rightly pointed out, the Rajas, there were many Rajas, when people in Hijli jail was losing lives to fight for independence, Rajas were uh, visiting from the western part of India, the Buckingham Palace, because they were enjoying the hunky-dory that they have to go through. And that is the unfortunate part of India, that Indian intelligentsia or people who become rich, they want to belong to the Western world by donating money there, as opposed to donating money or doing something good in India. So I think that is the real challenge. The backbone of our country has broken down. And that's what I see in your book. I read the book in the last two days, by the way. Why, you know, why is this lady writing this? Because she has also lost her backbone. So she's writing it not because Harvard is encouraged. Harvard encouraged, gives, gave her the platform. But they want to say something which, which, which will generate some kind of, uh, you know, buzz. And in the process, she's getting all the attention. I don't think she deserves your attention. You, I see you at a much higher level, right? You are bringing out a very fundamental point the snake, and the snake is in our country. And the snake is which we have to deal with, which is to bring a sense of confidence on who we are. I want to discuss what Parthagos said. I hope, he, I wish he were there. Uh, the, his first point, I totally disagree with. His first point is that these universities are centers of free speech. Bullshit. What, have you heard of something called cancer culture? I mean, he says he read my book in two days. I, I, there's a, there are a lot of sections on this called cancel culture. What does cancel culture mean? Cancel culture means is a culture starting from there, which says that those who belong to the privileged class, who are the oppressors, they have built all the narratives. And the oppressed have been silenced. Okay, this is true. We are trying to decolonize also. And, and therefore, the view of the oppressor should be canceled. If he's speaking, you can cancel him. You can uninvite him. You can, you, if, he, if he wants to say something uh, from his side, you don't have to listen to him. You can boycott him. That is called cancel culture. Please look it up. If you don't know what is cancel culture and you're sitting in Boston, you're really not qualified to comment on what, what is wrong with the, the so-called free speech. So this business of cancel culture is prevalent. The term has been coined uh, over a decade ago. And this is now the, the way how the media is being managed. Secondly. Cancel culture is also very deceptive and underground. It is part of the algorithms and machine learning training on social media to cancel people who are of a certain type. Let me repeat. During the COVID, I had one interview which got 2 million views on my YouTube channel in 48 hours. And they asked me, they wrote me a note saying that this violates our standards. Please cancel it. Please delete it or else we'll stop your account. And what it was, was a Jyotish saying that this whole COVID approach is wrong. There should be a different approach and somebody from giving an Ayurvedic point of view and somebody not in favor of the vaccinations. And therefore, the policy, official policies, all this bullshit about free speech. What the hell free speech? I was not given my free speech. I was not allowed to say all these things. So try going to Harvard and having a talk. Try. I would like to see challenge Partha Ghosh to invite me at Harvard and see if they'll allow. In a private meeting, yes, uh, in a room, they will. Okay, so this is called cancel culture. So you see, uh, to, to say that there is free speech is, uh, is nonsense because neither in social media, it's all controlled. Social media allows up to a point, but the, uh, the preference is given to people of a certain ideology and some people are canceled and they are even deplatformed. And, you know, I know many examples of this happening uh, in the social media right now. And that is because the algorithms have been trained on social justice with a certain ideological framework. Uh, you cannot 
say anything that could be remotely considered Islamophobic and then you'll be cancelled. But uh, hundreds of people are talking in, uh, things that are Hindu phobic and nobody cancels them. Nobody cancels them. I mean, Hindu phobia is rampant in Harvard. But uh, you try to criticize uh, Islam and you will be called Islamophobic. So this business of free speech is also nonsense. If you if he hasn't understood okay. that, then I think he's li living in the 1980s or 90s. He's kind of 20 years obsolete because uh, that that is old uh, old fashioned. That is old fashioned thinking. You know, okay, sab uh, they have free speech. All we have to do is give our point of view. Nonsense. Your point of view gets a little bit of circulation. There, the other point of view gets so much circulation. Somebody controls the media. Somebody controls the ratings. Somebody gets a thousand views and somebody gets a million views. It does matter. Both have freedom to speak. But the distribution channel is not equal. If you are an economist, you will know the importance of knowledge distribution, just like product distribution. I may make some, I may be making shoes, but I can't compete against Nike because they got all the distribution. They got all um, the big, big channels supporting them. So you see, we have to uh, uh, understand the problem. I don't think that gentleman has understood, done Purva Paksha of uh, the, the, the institutions of higher learning uh, while saying that they're all into free speech. Even in India, even in uh, India, you go to some of these may universities. I, uh, may I you cannot speak uh, uh, yes, yes, please. I want to have a debate with you on whether uh, Harvard has free speech. No, That's uh, my point. You no, know, I think uh, the, in debate, you know, in debate, firstly, we have to agree that we have to respect each other's views. Yes. That is one side, freedom of yes. speech, as opposed to you qualifying what I do not understand or not understand. Yes. No, no, because you said you started you started I, no. No, Parthaji, you started by saying that you that you characterize me as not understanding enough and you want to take it to a different level. And I'm saying that I you escaped the problem, you've avoided the problem. No, Before you take it no, to another I, level, you no, need to understand the problem. No, I think uh, you're making too many judgments okay. very quickly. I just made two points or four points I want to make. Okay. So let's not make any judgments on the basis of the first two points. All okay. that I'm saying. All that I'm saying is very simple, is that they, there are all kinds of views in the world, some valid, some invalid, some positive, some negative, some, sense, some make sense, some nonsense. That's true, and we have to live with that. That's how the world shapes. Now, you made a very important point, and that's what I was trying to focus on, that we have to be competitive. And for India to be competitive, we have to choose who are competitors and choose our, what are the vectors of competition. Now, I do not want to compete with some nonsense, some professor from Harvard writing some nonsense about how IIT is uh, following a caste system or not, because that's none of my, not a cup of tea for me. I want to be, I as a person, uh, as you know, uh, uh, I established a leadership academy in IIT. Why? I want to demonstrate to the world, India could offer to the world a leadership model which is significantly superior because I come from the uh, world of management consulting. That's what I do. And I want to see the boys and girls of our country produce as models, organizational models, leadership models, business models, which are the best in the world. That's why I want to compete. I don't want to compete with this uh, lady in Harvard no nonsense she's talking. That's what I'm saying. But that's the third point. And the fourth point is that I do have a lot of colleagues at Harvard, at uh, MIT, at Boston. And I see the, I've seen the spectrum of views, a wide spectrum, all the way from the right to the left. On one side, we have people like Friedman. On the other side, we have people like Krugman. Krugman, as you know, is very socialistic uh, and more closer to Marx, whereas Friedman is closer to extreme form of quote-unquote capitalism. And they have coexisted. They have coexisted. Sometimes the world moves slightly towards the right, sometimes towards the left, sometimes stays in the middle. It's like just like a pendulum. And what I'm saying, given the great work you have done, I'm appreciating you, by the way, Rajiv, you have to understand that. I'm not challenging you in any way. I'm saying that the real challenge is what you pointed out. Why Indian business leaders, even thought leaders, academia, only feels 
that they belong only where they could have their name appearing at Harvard Business School Donation Center or at the Kennedy School or at MIT, as opposed to doing something in India, which I fully agree with you. Now, I think what you and I and the rest of the group here should focus on how to change that mentality of India, that insecurity, that unless someone at Harvard or MIT sees by name, I don't belong. And the final point I want to make, Tagore felt the same way. Tagore in Calcutta was not really much appreciated until he got Nobel Prize. Satyajit Ray, Pothed Panchali, the only person who won Oscar, till someone in France appreciated how great Satyajit Ray's Pothed Panchali is and how great, uh, how the British Film Institute appreciate. Then he, when he came back to Calcutta, the, not only in Bengal, but Indian film houses were full. They want to see Satyajit Ray. So I think that is the fundamental issue that we as Indians, and that's what I would like to work with you, that do not have the courage to appreciate each other. We need a stamp from outside. Uh, we, you know, even I would speak for myself. If I uh, was living only in India, or Vivekananda did not give the speech in Chicago, same Narendra would remain as Narendra. So I think that if you and I, with this group, could work on that aspect, that how Indians should develop their confidence, their point of view, what we feel is good, not based on what the West is talking about or what the East is talking about. That's what I saw in Japan. Japan is extremely proud, proud of their culture. They uh, do things which they feel is good. And I think that's what's the problem. Uh, I would like to work with you because that is a real problem. To take on this lady, she's talking nonsense. Why, why you want to waste your time or my time? Let her talk. I will talk as we are talking. And we would rather create a journey for India and the Indian diaspora which people would look up to. That's what I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. And let's have the freedom, the courage to represent, you term, term the word Vedic philosophy. I'm a big believer of Vedic philosophy, but we have to live Vedic philosophy first. Let's live it, which I see in Japan, that every moment from going down to doing things on time, respecting each other, that's what Vedic philosophy. We do not honor time. We, our productivity is low. We do not honor each other. And I think that's what I would like to work on with you. How to establish, that's why what is the Leadership Academy is all about. You know, I developed this model of leadership. I, I want to just share with you when I was uh, helping MIT's president to develop leadership model. I developed it from zero up. But when they wanted it, I said, no, I want to plant it in IIT Kharagpur instead of MIT, though when I developed it, I was trying to, I was teaching leadership at MIT. But then I said, you know, if we have to really establish something, let it be in my motherland. Now, so that's where I am. So I hope I have not offended you by saying, I want to go a, deep, a step deeper because you have gone a step deep. But what I meant by deeper, I feel I want to look to ourselves like the myths of the Tatas you talked about, to myself, let me not criticize others, what I could do to uplift the brand of India, the image of India, the promise of India, the heritage of India on the global stage. And that's what I'm committed to. and I, We will do it. That's the end of my... Thank you. Thank you very much. I think uh, I agree with you. And I, first of all, I want you to know that I respect you because anybody who, uh, after being successful, gives back uh, has to be respected. Uh, you, can, you can agree or disagree with on all the details, but uh, at the end of the day, you're a good human being and you're giving back and you're a good Bharatiya and you're a good person, ambassador of our culture and so on. My issues are not of a personal kind because these are issues with a lot of people and I, I many people. So let me depersonalize. It's nothing to do with you. You just happen to be the handsome guy in front of me right now. And so if it oh, were somebody... Thank you, you know, so much. We, yeah. we must meet. We must yeah, meet. We, no, no, we must meet. But, you know, 
you're just the, the guy in front of me right now, so I'm being saying all this, but I'm actually looking beyond just the personality. I'm looking at the concept. I know, I know. So let me take two, three points. Let me take. First point I already responded to that the, we cannot assume that there is total freedom of speech and level playing field because like any distribution channel, whether you're making shoes and you're up against Nike, it's not a level playing field when it comes to distribution channel because he gets distribution channel and I don't. Or the same is true of knowledge. I don't get into the BBC. I don't get into CNN, nor would you, to represent a counterpoint of a Harvard professor. So the the also in the social media, the the algorithms are tilted. The algorithms are tilted because the machine learning is on certain type of data sets. And a lot of groups are complaining. And we should also be complaining. And I'm complaining on that. So the knowledge distribution is not a level playing field. And we cannot say that just because I have a right to speak, my speech goes as far in terms of the number of views and the number of people, the number of ears that listen as somebody else's speech. Okay, so we do, this is a well-known fact in media that the uh, e equality of speech does not translate into equality of impact and equality of reach. The reach is different, even though everybody's able to speak. Point one. Point two is a very, is a, is a point that you made several times. Why should we care about Ajanta Subramaniam? Let me and, and, uh, answer that. Ajanta Subramaniam is one part of an ecosystem. There is also Suraj Yengde at Harvard Kennedy School. He is the head of the Afro-Dalit movement, which says that the Dalits are the blacks of India. And he's a Dalit. They brought in, and he's the poster boy of this movement. And basically, he's championing going all over the country, giving evidence, giving testimony in legal hearings, in uh, hearings where they, are trying, where they are coming up with laws against the uh, caste abuse. There are laws in California, in many cities, in many in Seattle. I don't know if you are current with all this, but these laws are spreading. And, and they are spreading where if a person right now, uh, under American laws of race, if a person is accused of racism, there are very serious consequences, both legal, political, economic, and you know, image-wise. And now they are bracketed uh, caste as race, as a form of racism. And so uh, mere accusation Mere allegation gets you in trouble. It may take years to clear a name, but you are in trouble because you are branded that way. And therefore, you cannot say that all these intellectuals have produced no uh, nothing. Uh, they have produced a lot of trouble for us. It is these intellectuals. It is the Suraj Yengde at Harvard. It is the Adanda Subramaniam. It is 10 other people I, I can name. And then there is a Saudare Rajan in New York who runs this uh, equality labs. They've done research, so-called research to produce evidence in their, uh, according to them that there is serious caste abuse in among all the IT workers who come from IIT in Silicon Valley. Mm. And they file lawsuits. <laughs> they file lawsuits. Now, you can say that, who cares? Well, the people ask the people. I have gone and talked to the people. I've interviewed the people. I've attended some of those hearings. The, the electricity, the electric, the, the, the energy in those rooms is so intense. So many Indians are going there and lobbying and they're very upset that they are being typecast, branded, now they are going to be, uh, there's going to be bias against them. And if there's a legal case against you, you'll be considered a casteist. And this is something that nobody in America even heard of 10 years ago. And this is a very serious problem that has been created. And you cannot say who cares about them. You should care about them. You should be out there when there is a, when there is hearings going on on, on uh, caste abuse. You should be out there and, and giving your evidence and your testimony. And you will hear how serious the problem is. You will hear that, you will find out that for every 10 people of our side, there's the hundreds of them on the other side, that these Afro-Dalit people and the Muslims, they all gathered all of them. So you will understand the gravity of the problem if you go outside your comfort zone and engage with these issues. Also, let me tell you, Harvard Kennedy School, I, inter I was there when I launched my book. One of the guys, uh, after I was done speaking, that uh, Indian IS people are coming there for training and they're being brainwashed in all these and uh, media people all over the world come there and get trained on how to uh, how to how to cover Modi, how to cover the elections, how to cover Hindu right wing and saffron and RSS, how to cover all of that. They are being trained. They are being indoctrinated. And so, if you don't like the coverage in Washington Post or in uh, Wall Street Journal or CNN or BBC, then you should know where it's coming from. Those people are not the rocket scientists. They are, they are not scholars who figured it out. Some scholars figured it out and trained them. Who are those scholars? What books have they written? That's what you have to You have to go uphill, up, uh, upstream. There is a pipeline of uh, people who discover and come up with knowledge. 
and then this knowledge gets distributed to others to through others to others and finally it ends up on the streets in a virus somewhere you have to go to the entire pipeline of ideology to go to, and the headquarters of this the nest of snakes sapo ka ghosla i have discovered so that is what i'm talking about it is not a simple thing that we have discovered mm-hmm. it is a very Absolutely. dangerous thing and it is a very dangerous thing we have discovered so this so we cannot this is the second point we cannot trivialize that the the uh, ajanta subramaniams and sura jengdes and sandhira rajans and all these kind of people are useless and who cares and we don't worry about it this is not true this is not true third point i'm going to make is while there is a debate between right wing and left wing in america the indian knowledge the indian tradition is neither american right wing nor american left wing it is neither the american conservative which is a christian b- biblical kind of a view nor is it the uh, tom friedman version of uh, liberalism because we are sent, even in my first book breaking india i showed we are sandwiched between the western left and the western right hindus are sandwiched attacked from both sides uh, we, agree, are from the, we, we are attacked from the christian right as uh, idol worshippers now this guy vivek ramaswamy is being attacked by the he's he's a right wing guy trying to get into the republican politics whether you agree with him or not the point i'm making is he's been attacked by the church that we do not want I- hindu idols in the white house this is the slogan we do not want hindu idols in the white house so because he's a hindu and he said he's a hindu and therefore he's a target even though he may be conservative so there is a limit to how much we can get support from the conservatives as far as liberals are concerned the liberals are the ones who are into wokeism this whole cricket crit- critical race theory critical caste theory is a product of the extreme left uh, extreme and and they the tom friedmans of the world mm-hmm. they are all supporting dei i would like to know uh, what are your thoughts in leadership training what are your thoughts on diversity equity inclusion i have whole chapters on that on diversity equity inclusion how through that window they are sneaking in they are sneaking in ideology which is completely antithetical to the vedic ideology this whole business of diversity equity inclusion in our culture we have so much diversity already we have so much uh, equality and inclusion already and like the first speaker said from the mahabharat and from bhagavad gita he made amazing uh, points we already have that we do not need this marxist diversity equity inclusion which is divisive which is violent and so the entire dei movement which every institution has i would like to know if your leadership training is taking a rebuttal doing a rebuttal of that and doing a counter and you cannot say wo ho raha hai theek ho raha hai kutte bhogte hain kuch Yeah, it's very good. You raised that point. It is a counter. It is a counter. Okay, in that's fact, a very good. I would like to. I would like to engage with you on what is your critique of the DEI movement from the United States. Uh, it started places like Harvard, went to World Economic Forum, spread all over. They've got these American consulting companies, you know, Price Waterhouse and McKinsey, and they're all going there and doing ESG valuations of your com- company's ESG rating. And within ESG, the S. of esg is dei diversity equity inclusion and uh, you should know what equity is and you should know you what know, equity, uh, equity is not equality and i will explain the difference between equity and equality in my book so absolutely. you see so you see the thing is that uh, if if you are doing a counter i would love to be part of that i would love to have a discussion with your with your dei experts who are training who are being uh, uh, who are teaching about dei because 99 i would say 100% of the institutions that i have come across in india on dei management schools business schools corporate people on dei they are towing the western line they are towing the western line and they are mm. getting their people hr department people certified by western institutions bringing in western consultants and it penetrating the indian psyche and indian institutions in a very big way so i would like deeper more you want that we should go deeper than me i would like to go deeper than you i mean we should both go deeper than each other we'll i would go, like to, deep. <laughs> i would like to i would like to challenge whether the what is the leadership training in your institution on the issue of diversity equity inclusion it's a very specific i'll i'll, I'll give you a short answer okay. rajiv i will be delighted to meet with you because that's a very deep question the short answer is you know in one of our lecture series which we'll invite you about uh, one year ago my title of my talk was leadership deficit in the in the west exposed exposed and we talked about basically what's going on in ukraine and russia and there i basically 
discuss what you just mentioned, that the Western model of ESG has been what I will call a zero-sum game. D divisions, you win, he loses, he wins, you lose, and it is, and what we are trying to do as the leadership more that we are de developing at IIT Correct for is what you're calling plus sum game. You synergize, you help bring thoughts together to create a higher level of thoughts or deeper level of thoughts. You accommodate different views to create better views. So and we are calling it plus sum model. That's a short version. And that so ESG gets expressed that we have to develop harmony with nature, which what Vedic philosophy talks about. The equity part, I agree with fully. It's more how do you ensure that the, whatever we do is equally synergizing different point of views. And of course, in the process, we can create a better world. But I would, if you don't mind, I will send a couple of our thoughts on that because this will take time and I'm sure others want to raise questions. So uh, we would send, I will send that paper. I would very much like your critic on that. But I talk about the leadership deficit exposed. And number two, what we will do, we'll send you, uh, Commander is also involved in the leadership academy, as well as as another person on the call, Pranav Patel and much of IIT Karakpur. Uh, where we will send you what is the model that we are talking about. And very you'll be very I would proud. To, I, would to, I would love to uh, read it with an open mind and give you my honest uh, feedback and be part Absolutely. of any conversation. And you know, so what? Uh, so I'm, I'm glad to hear this part from you. But this part that you are willing to take on a certain model of leadership and a certain model of diversity and a certain model of uh, environmentalism, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and propose a counter to it, is exactly the reason why the Ajanta Subramaniams do matter, because they, this is a this is an intellectual debate, and you know they they have take they turned their positions into institutions, laws. They've got got uh, Harvard has a law on caste now. Do you know Harvard has a policy on caste? It didn't exist five years ago. It's now. So now you see they have they have turned it into you know how the Americans are. Once something gets institutionalized, it becomes part of law. So in law school, they're teaching caste system. So the next generation of lawyers will be very caste sensitive when they come across an Indian. When they come across an Indian, they will quickly try to apply this and that and quote some law and you can be in trouble. Uh, but there is no such similarity between in the law pertaining Chinese people or how, what they are, how they are got biases. There is no law which says the Ashraf and Muslims and the Ajlaf Muslims are effectively a caste system. There is no law like that. There is, they have never been named. They have never been named, singled out with laws passed. Only the Hindus have been named, and this all happened in the last three years. So you see that the, the debates that start at Harvard don't just end at Harvard. They, what starts at Harvard doesn't stay just there. It goes all over the world because of their influence. It turns into laws also. So I would say that it is good news that your leadership training is cognizant of all these problems and issues. I would love to be engaged, and that is where we need to work together. But at the same time, I would say that these leadership uh, models, the different competing models of leadership and environmentalism start in intellectual discourse in important universities and think tanks. And you have to also nip it in the bud and take on people at that level. Yeah, thank you, uh, Rajivji, for this excellent book. Um, and uh, I, I totally uh, understand your frustration uh, of uh, IITNs not reacting. Um, but I, and I can relate to it as well because um, I am an alumni of IIT Kharagpur and a founding member of Sambad. So if you see the reaction side, then Sambad is a reaction basically to what is to what was happening in IIT Kharagpur. So we reacted by presenting an alternative viewpoint, and that has worked to an extent as well. Uh, but the problem that why a few professors are not commenting or not actively opposing few things happening in IITs. I think uh, it's it's a it's a major problem. Like uh, IIT, as you rightly said, said, is a microcosm of the entire country, and we are all in the urgent symptom. Like we don't want to fight our battles when when the time is right. So there are a few um, what do you say people who are raising their voice in all IITs, not just Kharagpur. 
So Samvad is in Kharagpur, but I can, after maybe after the today's session, I can send you the list of initiatives that IITNs have taken, IIT students and professors have taken to respond and to rebuttal the, the attacks that are coming from the other side. And in a very positive sense, uh, we are not involved in day-to-day -day politics of what they are doing and uh, you know filing petitions every day. That's what that's not what we are doing. But we are presenting an alternative viewpoint. And IITNs being an IITNs, they they are actually accepting what what is being presented. So they judge and then they take their decision. So earlier you are right. There were no, there was nothing uh, coming from our side, but now it's not the case. All IITNs, in, in all the IITs, there are uh, uh, initiatives like Sambad, and they are taking their uh, the positions. Uh, number two that I wanted to tell about is uh, regarding funding the centers. So as uh, big billionaires of India are funding Harvard, there are small initiatives from our end also, like uh, Partha Ghosh, who was uh, speaking before me. Uh, he has funded and uh, started an uh, center in IIT Kharagpur, which is center of leadership. Uh, so this is also in a way a respond uh, in a in a way to contribute back to the system that has uh, made all, everything happen. So Partha Ghosh has uh, committed a center. Similarly, I, I saw your uh, video with Ron Gupta in Washington DC. So I did my PhD in Ron uh, Ranbir and Chitra Gupta School of Infrastructure, which is in IIT Kharagpur, and it was uh, donated by Ron. But what I can see is like in future, there is a lot of scope of uh, big investment by, uh, by rich people. So with the new education policy, there are centers coming in all the IITs, the Indian Knowledge Centers. Indian Knowledge Center, now we already have it in IIT Kharagpur. So this center probably can be, if we convince the big, uh, big players, big, big billionaires to fund the centers, then it would be an amazing thing. Let's say uh, Mahindra Center of Indian Knowledge System in IIT Bombay, and Tata Center of IKS in IIT Delhi. So this requires an effort and uh, uh, effort from government probably because it's not a small thing to uh, to bring all this business center uh, business houses together and fund this this type of initiatives. But as I said, there are things in track and hopefully there will be some positive things happening in the future. So uh, I would just like to mildly with new humility um, in a way. Uh, disagree with the point that things are so bleak. Like there are some positive positive things that IITNs are also taking. But I also agree your point and take your rebuttal that maybe things are not to that extent that it should happen. And where we really salute you for, for your efforts that you have done and placed. So uh, Kuldeep, I'm very glad. First of all, uh, I'm very glad that uh, you are taking the initiative. Uh, that is a good idea. And I'm hoping that's the case. Uh, one of the most important things you need to know is that the world is competitive. It is not that we isolate ourselves and forget, close our eyes to the other side. Uh, we are playing cricket. We are teaching our people to be good bowlers and batsmen. But, you know, we've never played against opponents. We don't care how many runs they make. We are just doing a good job ourselves. That won't win. That won't win. You have to understand the other side that you are going to compete against. You train your people. You train your batsmen against the toughest, toughest bowlers of all kinds. And you train your bowlers against the toughest batsmen of all kinds. You have to train in a competitive arena. This requires battlefield experience, as they say it in military, battlefield experience. As they say in debates, you have to go out and debate opponents who are the toughest opponents to qualify as the leader who is able to do this. And so in Indian politics, nobody becomes a big leader just sitting at home and saying, why should I worry about what Rajiv Gandhi is saying, what Mamta Banerjee is saying, what this guy is saying, or whoever they happen, whoever happens to be the opponent. I don't worry about them. I'm just, uh, I know the truth is in my heart and I don't need to worry about others. You never succeed in becoming good unless you go out and compete against those who are opposed to you, who are the best in their class. Okay, so the Indian Indian economy is competing against China. Indian military is competing against China. Indian, whatever we are always having to compete. Indian cricket team is competing against the, the, the whoever is the best. So in your field, you must know who your opponents are. And I don't know if you have done that. I don't know if you have done that because the tendency is the tendency is to ignore what is uh, out of the comfort zone. Tendency of people is to live in the comfort zone with like-minded people and doing, you know, just 
be very goody goody with each other i'm doing so well you are doing so well and we all congratulate each other hug each other and celebrate and everything goes well but what i'm asking you to do uh, is uh, 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 kuldeep ji kuldeep ji i'm asking you to do this i'm asking you to make it a part of your movement to do what is called purva paksha in our tradition which means study the other it is a respect i'm not talking about yelling screaming loud and throwing th things at them and making threats and becoming a nuisance no respectfully respectfully understand their point of view if you have not understood their point of view i don't care how many initiatives you start it will not work because it's all ivory tower it's all in a vacuum it's all in a cocoon and you are just basically talking to each other and your people the people that you produce will be unfit to face the real world because they don't know what the real world is like so i wanted to hear from you what are you doing to understand the state of the leadership narrative on the enemy side what are you doing about it do you even know who they are do you know what their what their curriculum is do you know what they are studying about you so that you can rebuttal it or are you avoiding it because if you are avoiding it if you are saying my batsman just knows how to play very well but i don't know what the other bowlers are doing i don't even want to face them that is fear of of uh, of uh, being uh, being outsmarted by the other side it is fear of facing the competitor and you can never win you never win unless you can face them in the eye so i would like like the commander here from the navy he knows that you have to always be doing war games against the, uh, the opponent you have to always have your information gathering people you know intelligence gathering people telling you what they're up to not only what weapons they have today but what they'll have in 2 years 5 years 10 years 20 years what they'll have you need to know all that so you are in a similar intellectual uh, kurukshetra and so you need to and i didn't hear a single word from you i always ask uh, if you are a leader tell me your do a competitive analysis tell me who are the top 5 competitors tell me what they're up to what their funding comes from where are they so that is what i am providing you i am providing you your competitive analysis okay so the first first thing you have to do is read what i am telling you about your competitors okay so firstly one level is certain individual who writing books and all that that is only superficial okay another level is where is the funding coming from so we can disrupt it we we must know so we can go interfere like the commander said and disrupt some of that okay for that uh, convince some of those people not to fund them but there is an even deeper level which is what is the ideological framework what is this what is the social justice theory how it comes from marxism how marxism became marxism 2.0 i have explained in this book how marxism 2.0 became marxism 3.0 how marxism 3.0 has now become marxism 4.0 how this critical race theory what are its premises how to give a how to give a theoretical response to a theoretical framework you have to respond you have to respond at each level there are individuals pumping out negative stuff you got to have your trained your people who can write good rebuttals you got to have funding people who are who are funding all this negative stuff and you got to have rebuttal to that how to respond but you also need how i don't know people in india who even understand from the from a theoretical framework point of view what is the social justice called critical race theory and critical caste theory i have been lecturing 100 times and everywhere i go there is little interest in understanding this there is a lot of interest ki hum theek kar rahe hain hamara itna gdp ho gaya hai hamara wo cricketer ne century maar di thi ek tendulkar ne bhi ek zamane mein triple century maar di thi to hamara koi problem nahi hai we are talking like that okay but i wanted to hear from you if you are a leadership person i wanted to hear from you what is the theoretical framework that you are up against and what is your counter to that theoretical framework so the the i'll give you some hints the problem lies in social sciences and these social sciences are filled with marxist social sciences the whole left wing comes by the time you have street violence and by the time you have political and media all this nonsense long before that there is a theoretical framework which the people in the academic world in places like harvard teach they develop this then they mark, then they spread it to all their alumni all over the world they spread it to the world economic forum you should know what is the relationship between harvard kennedy school and world economic forum you should know that and then you should know that when world economic forum adopts young indian leaders and tries to nurture them what exactly is going on i don't think you even know these things i don't think you know what is or i haven't heard evidence what is this this thing called esg which is all over the corporate world esg environment social social so, social justice 
and governance is the mantra, the, the standard. Every Indian industry is going around the world getting American training on ESG. ESG is a Trojan horse. Why is it a Trojan horse? Do you even understand it? You should understand it. Because if you don't understand, you do not know that right in your backyard, <laughs> right in your neighborhood, these infiltrations are coming in the form of these indexes, in the form of there are a lot of people being certified to get into HR departments. I'm sure IIT Kharagpur has or will soon have a DEI officer, di diversity, equity, inclusion officer. And these people, you need to understand where are they coming from? Who trained yeah. them? Okay, you cannot, you cannot say that uh, we ignore all this and, uh, you know, so I would, I am trying to get our people to wake up, to understand and recognize, do a purva paksha, which is our traditions uh, method of understanding the other side and giving a response. Okay, in all the debates from Adi Shankara and even before, they always acknowledge the opponent, summarize what he said, and point by point take it apart and give a response. They don't ignore and say, "Wo boli ja raha hai." Uh, we don't need to pay attention to him. We do need to pay attention to him. Yes. Otherwise, you cannot be you cannot be in the competitive arena. If you're in cricket, you need to pay attention. If you're in military, you need to pay attention. If you're in diplomacy, you need to pay attention. If you're in academics and you are in human rights and, and you are into leadership training, you need to pay attention. If you're in politics, of course, people are paying attention. So I, I'm surprised that Indians who are so competitive in so many fields and they understand their competitor very well. Even a, a shopkeeper knows what his competitor is doing, what his pricing is like, how he should adapt. Everybody in India is, is very competitive. But when it comes to social justice, for not me and my family, but for a bigger cause, we resort to this escapism like Arjun in the early part of the Bhagavad Gita uh, did. So that is my response to you. I mean, you're absolutely right. We, we cannot be just reactive to the attacks. We need to do Purva Paksha and understand from where it is coming. So... The samvad that you see, it's a symptom that, I mean, it's an initiative that came after the Purva Baksha. So, let's, I'll give you an, an anecdote, like what happened. So, five years, uh, when I joined as a PhD student in IIT Kharagpur, there used to be big posters about, uh, against casteism in India, against Hindutva. So, all these things were only rhetoric, right? So, we understood like this is coming from, and Bengal being Bengal, the, the, the place of Marxism. We understood from where this is coming. Our people did uh, study about it and how to counter it. So after understanding their viewpoint and how to counter it ideologically and theoretically, we presented speakers to the audience. So this was one of the attempts that we did. There were other initiatives also which I can talk on, but the result of this initiative that we took, that we undertook, I can guarantee you that now in IIT Kharagpur, they cannot go uh, like anything. And if they come up with something new, we have a people in place because we understand from where this is coming. So I totally so get your all, viewpoint that there's, yeah, there should be a no, overview idea about what, from where things are coming. Yeah. No, no, I understand. So I, I'm very, first of all, I want to congratulate you. You're one of the very few who has been able to convince me that you are looking at doing a Puru Paksha and looking at opponents and I congratulate you for that. But I want to push it even further. I want to, uh, to ask you, whether your Purva Paksha of Marxism ended in Bengal or whether you took it to the global global left-wing uh, network and whether you really studied what is the role of Harvard, what is the role of Berkeley, what is the role of France, France, what is, yeah. the, what is the role of Oxford, who are the, where are the leading thinkers of this, okay, and then how are they training an army of Indian, uh, Indian sabotage. This is, there is Indian sabotage being co coming from there, sabotage into the administrative services, sabotage the children of the industrialists. I'll give you a hint. The reason the, some of these industrialists are doing what they're doing, even though at home they do puja and they're very Hindu and all, is because some of their son or daughter is into all this stuff. The kid, the next generation is not as Hindu, okay. And they are, they are the, taking some of the family money and family brand name and doing all these things because they want to build their career. In a, in, in a very uh, liberal kind of fashionable way. I'm giving you this hint, but you need to study further and you, you can read some of my books about it. But, you know, what you need to figure out is how these international hubs, which are the uh, are training academies, they, and, and, whether, and how they're training, you should read in the book how they're training uh, media all over the world, including in India, how they're planting their office, their uh, DEI is an initiative that they have started 
and the plan is to infiltrate Indian industry, Indian government, Indian academia with DEI officers. These DEI officers salute to their boss in Harvard or place or, or World Economic Forum, and they are not patriotic. They are maybe on, uh, looking like that, but their loyalty goes to the international organizations which certify them, which get them jobs. Okay, and which look after them, which give them, they have annual meetings, they have, like you have Pan IIT alumni, they have alumni of their own, and they, these are people all over the world that they have planted. Okay, so I need to, I need to, I would like to know whether you have done all that also, and, and whether, and, and whether you have looked at how many Indian IAS officers are being trained at Harvard Kennedy School. Are you aware of it? I have gone there and I've interviewed them. I have them on video. You should watch my videos. There's a guy from Harvard Kennedy School talking about how there is no freedom of speech for, for a guy who is pro-India. And this gentleman, Partha Ghosh, uh, he is, lives in Boston. He says there is all this free speech. I have respectfully disagree, but I'll come to that in a moment. Okay. So the Purva Paksha of the global nexus, not just local Marxism in Bengal, that is your next challenge. Very good point. I fully agree. You know, I have tears, uh, uh, I have tears in my eyes. You just said exactly what we are trying to do. And uh, the commander is there. Commander, we should include uh, Sir in our uh, board of advisors. Because we are exactly, you know, it's funny that what you said, Rajiv. Can I call you Rajiv, by the way? We're in the same Yeah, yeah no, 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 you call me Rajiv. You should Rajiv, come. Rajiv, uh, you, you should come have, to yes, visit. And I'll visit you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, Rajiv, you underscored what prompted me to humbly, I am being very humble to begin this leadership movement in our country. And that to IIT Kharagpur, where, as you know, hundreds of people lost their lives for the independence of the country. He's yes. in jail. And, you know, the, I, today I gave a talk that it was independence of India. Now I have to have independence of our mind to be able to express who we are around the world with courage. And you made a very important point. I mean, it's so close. Dear to my heart, which Tagore felt, Satyajit Ray felt, even Vivekananda felt. You know, Vivekananda wouldn't have been Vivekananda if he didn't get the endorsement in Chicago. Right. And that is the weakest part which right. we have to fix. And we yes. have to do it together. Okay. No, no, absolutely. We, our, our reference point is somebody else's endorsement. This is very sad because the whole Vedic system is that you have to have an inner strength. And your reference point exactly. should not be, what do somebody else think of me? Absolutely. Brilliant. So, so let's, this, uh, yeah. so let's yeah. continue this conversation. And I'm glad that, uh, Absolutely. you know, very rarely I have these meetings where I feel it was really worth it because I met one or two important people that we should continue. And I'm very glad with you and Commander in particular, uh, we should be doing things together. I'm very happy about that. Excellent. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. I really mean it. And I want to congratulate the organizers of this, that, you know, it takes courage to uh, open up these issues. And uh, I know all my Bengali friends are extremely intellectual people. Whether I agree with them, disagree with them, I can have a good argument with them. And I love it. They love that. I.D. Kharagpur has that uh, advantage of being in the middle of this uh, old uh, tradition of Bengal. debate and arguments and so on. And I am excited about this. Uh, and we'll continue and maybe have a longer relationship. Let me come in. So, Namaste, Rajivji. Uh, we have mail exchange. So, what is deeply saddening? See, I am doing PhD in chemistry. So, the whole field is beyond my reach. So, this is a humanities. This comes under humanities. But I, I feel many humanities people are not aware of this thing. And to get into this kind of discussion, we need serious training. So, I have seen uh, your previous book, Breaking India Part 1. You have done a uh, course under uh, in this university. Yes. So is there is there you are planning any training material for people like us who can get trained? See, my, my background is not humanities. I am from chemistry. To me, critical <coughs> meaning is different. So, so I would like to, the answer is that I need a collaboration from a university in India. Uh, if a university in India is uh, offers us that we'll develop a course jointly, uh, I'll be. I'll invest my time. It takes a lot of time from our side, but I would like a an academic institution in India. If if you can convince the humanities people, that would be great. Uh, we can then take the time and develop a course. Or or if uh, a or if uh, or if yeah. uh, or if your uh, 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 professor Ghosh's 
uh, organization leadership training, you know, if they want to organize a course, we would, I'd be Absolutely. happy to do that. Absolutely. Prashun, uh, yes, sir. you should use the Academy of Leadership. Commander is all the time there as the platform where you could invite uh, Rajiv to come and do a program. And that's exactly the purpose of the Academy of Leadership, to develop the courage of thinking. And that's exactly what Rajiv is underscoring. Courage of your original thinking. And let's I'm not talking appreciate. about lecture. Actually, I am talking about entire course. Means this we can develop we can, it. We can yeah, develop a course. That is the role of the academy. Develop yeah. it. And it can be taught okay. to the students so that they get the training what is going on. Right. So this is a very important point you've made and I would love to be part of that. Yes. Partha Ghoshar, I have just one comment here. Uh, yes, so please. we had earlier organized a lot of uh, talks in IIT Kharagpur, both offline and online. But we face challenges because we, we are not a or registered organization, somebody. But if you if the Leadership Academy finds the uh, speaker interesting, then we can have a, like a regular courses, where regular uh, lectures like this, if you, if you like this format. Because we have a good team who have experience in, in, in doing this thing. So, Let's talk on it with, I will also be in touch with Kamada Jaitley and Prasun is already in campus. We can develop something. So good things coming out of this uh, talk. Very happy. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we'll give you the platform. And this platform can be used. This is the platform. For, and that's one of the very important objectives. Very good. I'm very glad yeah. to see you are so open-minded and so uh, interested in uh, shaking things up because young people should be like that. Young people should be thinking out of the box and... Uh, uh, provoked and uh, and there's nothing to fear i mean they have to they have to be uh, trained to think out of the box and i'm very glad you're doing that and and next thing is that uh, so all this when i was reading reading your book all this isabel what isabel wilkerson or ajanta subramaniam is writing and building it up they are not giving a fair chance even to respond means if if i am from upper caste background so if i disagree with them then they will say, I am I am supporting their institutional casteism. If yes. I am silent, then they will say, oh, you are silent because you are accepting that, that this problem exists. You so got it. Now I, you... I want to say that that I have done my master's from IIT Guwahati and I am doing PhD in IIT Kharagpur. So in my entire career, I haven't done any discrimination to any people and neither <laughs> see this thing, this thing happening. But what they, what they are saying means it's, it's quite saddening and it's it really serious issues that if if one doesn't subscribe to caste identity, one is still a beneficiary of caste privilege. Now this is how ridiculous. How how can we counter in this in this argument? And so so, this so I'll give you a, I'll give you their point of view because to do pur paksha you should know their point of view. I don't agree with it, but you should know their point of view. Their point of view is that a white person may be having a lot of black friends and maybe in his company he's not discriminating. Uh, as a person. But the mere fact that he's white gives him some privilege because some institutional uh, provisions were made hundreds of years ago. Institutions were created for whites. And, you know, there are, there are, there are, so, so he's enjoying the legacy. He's enjoying the legacy of being white, even though as an individual, he's not a bad guy. So this is, this is the problem. Now they mapped it on to maybe it's true for Americans and whites and all, but they mapped it on blindly to India and caste. Thanks to all these Ajanta Subramaniam and a similar type of people. And, and that is that caste people have created a privileged structure of society. And therefore, even though you as an individual are not a problem, you are a good guy, but you are still enjoying the privilege by virtue of your birth. This is the argument. This type of argument yes, cannot be have any counter. Means what, what should I counter them then? If so if you, if, if, you, if you read my book carefully, mm -hmm. I give their point of view, and I also give uh, I also give my rebuttals all the time. You should do that, and we can have more discussion. I think now we have uh, we have stirred up the real issues, and next time we should have a conversation where we actually start out with real, serious, deeper issues, and we can. I, I I'll be happy to uh, get, engage you at a deeper level. Yeah. Absolutely. And Prashun, as I mentioned yesterday, yesterday I think, uh, that you should use the platform with the help of Commander and we have Pallav Patel, Pranav Patel, who is going to be full-time. 
to yeah. encourage such discussion with Rajiv. And Rajiv has spent so much time and effort to go to the deeper, you know, I would say the deeper points of our character, which we have to address to build character which the world would look up to. That's it. Good. Let's do it. Thank you. Then thank you to the faculty and students and to, just, to those just, I, I want to make make the ending yeah, points. Yeah, yeah. 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 So I, I am belonging from a SC community and I, I went to the two IITs still now. IIT Kanpur for my postgraduate and IIT Kharagpur now for my PhD. So I haven't seen any of any of the institutes who are directing any other caste material. They are in their regulations, rules, and, and also in the friend level, friends level also. We they are very much helping the uh, general or the uncategorized uh, students. They are very much helpful to us, and we have never felt like any insult to it. Uh, rather, I think Ajanta Subramanian, which uh, she makes it her point, like the lower caste do not uh, lower caste do not have merits. They they lack merits. So this is a direct insult, I think, to us to the communities like uh, scheduled caste and the STs, who are uh, I mean they are fighting, they are competing with the upper caste and other students. I mean they are completely qualifying the eligibility criteria and other qualifying the exams and all the things. So this is, I think, rather in contrast, the she is trying to insult the lower caste because meritocracy or the merit excellent is a necessary condition to yeah, necessary no, excellent to, point. I'm, I'm, to very, I'm very proud of you. I really like what you're saying. You should we should have people like you go. I mean, Harvard should I would really like uh, Mr. Goish to get him invited to Harvard and say, okay, you guys want to debate? I'm going to fly this guy. I'm going to sponsor him. Give him the forum and let him debate these Harvard guys with his lived experience as an SC, ST person. With what is his anecdote? What is his testimony? We ought to let him speak. I think that would be a wonderful thing. And if you can pull it off, I'd love to come for that. Uh, Rajiji, first of all, like, do you have time? We can continue or else if you are short of time. No, you see, the end. thing is, the thing is this, uh, I, I don't mind. I mean, I'm really enjoying this, but it is just that I've fixed up. I thought two hours would be enough. So there's, I've got a notice, a reminder. I'm going to be on another conference call, but you know what we can do is we can set up now. People can think, reflect. And so next time we won't have to go through all these introductions. Uh, we will just dive deep into, uh, uh, deeper issues. And 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 if the if the uh, commander wants me to come uh, on an online give lectures, maybe that can be a forum for more Q and A at that point in time. Because I'm concerned that Indians are not going deep enough; they're just very superficially getting rid of uh, claiming there's no problem. And I'm trying to get them to think deeper, and that is where the solutions lie. So I'm very happy to have had this sure. discussion. Thank you so much. Yeah, let's you. conclude then. Yeah, Krishna. Thank you. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah, sure. Thank you. So, so um, we are we are very much grateful that you have uh, spent time with us, and we are also looking forward to meet with you in offline. And also later, we'll discuss these things in detail. And we should uh, thank other uh, Anurag ji and uh, uh, who is there, Ujjwala ji, and uh, uh, both of uh, both, and all other members from the Infinity Foundation who have hel helped us to organize this event uh, and this engaging discussion. Really exciting discussions. And there are different outcomes, and we also want to thankful want to be thankful to the Sambad members, and also I, I'm grateful to Commander VK Jetli sir and uh, Pranab Patel sir, and also Pathagos sir for this type of discussion with Rajiv ji, and we want to go forward with this uh, with a positive sense of views, and then and and thank you all, and we will meet next day. Oh. Namaste everybody. Thank Namaste. you. Namaste. Namaste.